Hi there. I've been out on a road trip to Pennsylvania, New York, and back for the past couple of weeks, and I got to do a lot of sightseeing. And I did come across some cast iron loot during my trip, including this little treasure, a Griswold meat grinder, or rather, a food chopper, because that's what they called it when they made it. I enjoy using a grinder for a whole bunch of different tasks in the kitchen, and I was surprised to find one made by Griswold. So now I get to clean this grinder up and bring it to work in condition. Compared to some rusty grinders at some antique malls, this is in pretty good condition, so it shouldn't be too hard to bring this one back to life. The corrosion on this grinder is pretty light, so all we really need to do is give it a vigorous scrubbing with my favorite rust remover, Barkeeper's Friend. For the record, the patent for this grinder was granted in 1936, so this could date anywhere from the 1930s through the 1950s. After they were bought by Randall Corporation in 1957, the Griswold name was retired from most of their products in the 1960s. So it seems these pieces weren't even part of this set, and I think they came from a different grinder because their attachment is completely different <laughs> and they don't fit. And now we lubricate the grinder with food grade mineral oil. You can get this stuff at your local market in the laxative section. And the grinder is cleaned up and ready to be put together. We just assemble it piece by piece and this grinder will be ready for use for the first time in decades. It comes with three separate grinding wheels and we're using the one meant especially for grinding meat. As you can see the handle turns easily. And now we're ready to grind some meat. We'll be making a simple breakfast sausage for our trial run here. The sausage is very easy to prepare and all we have to do is grind up some simple spices to mix in with the ground meat. You can use a spice grinder though I like using an old-fashioned mortar and pestle. We break out a large pork shoulder and trim three pounds of meat. We cut off the extra skin and cut the pork shoulder into large pieces that will fit into the grinder. And here I learned one lesson. You need a good solid grounded stand for this grinder to work best. I didn't have any accidents or mishaps with the grinder attached to this little table, but next time I'll be using a more sturdy mount. Even so, it was very easy to grind this pork shoulder, and the end result was three pounds of ground pork. This was certainly some good exercise. When I say it was very easy, I mean it did take some real pressure, but it wasn't too hard. One thing about cooking with vintage utensils, you certainly don't need a membership in a fitness club when you use these things. Notice how the ground meat changes color when you grind a more fatty piece of meat. We're only using one pound for our sausage, and the rest of the ground pork is being kept aside for use in another dish very soon. And with that, the hard part is done. Now all we have to do is mix in our spices and knead it all together.
And the result is homemade sausage, which looks and smells a lot better than the stuff you buy at the store. You can stuff your sausage into casings if you want, but here we're just shaping it into patties, just like burgers. The secret to a good shaped patty is to press it flat and wide before you fry it. A lot of recipes say to poke a little dimple in the center, but that's really not necessary if you make the entire patty flat and wide. And at last, it's time to cook. And since we used a Griswold grinder to make this sausage, we're frying it in a vintage Griswold cast iron skillet. Since this is ground pork, we have to be sure there's no pink at the center of this patty. Simply cooking it for three or four minutes doesn't always produce the right result because every patty is shaped and weighs a little different. I find a good guide to flipping the patty is when the color change from cooking has spread from the bottom to the top of the patty. After flipping, we only have to wait about two minutes for the other side to cook. Then we flip it one last time and add a slice of cheese to each patty. It takes about another two minutes for the cheese to melt. Then we remove the patties and toast some English muffins. These muffins were buttered before they were added to the pan. You only have to toast them for about 30 seconds before flipping them. And the final step is to fry an egg for each muffin. Um, could I have a sausage patty with just some oh. cheese? Oh. No yeah. egg. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right, then I'll just make one egg. Okay. Yeah, what? I, I have to be like, I mean, well, you know, I have like in mood egg. Okay. By the way, notice the egg is not sticking. <laughs> That's one thing they say all the time on our group is that eggs are always sticking. Key to that, of course, is temperature control. Yeah, I was about to say, temperature control. Nice and round. And here we present two muffins with sausage, egg, and cheese made with homemade sausage. And so we have a pound of homemade sausage plus two pounds of ground pork. And that doesn't even use all of that pork shoulder. Considering the cost of meat these days, this sausage costs no more than a fraction of what I would have paid for it at the store. And that's only one reason why a grinder is a must-have tool in your kitchen because you can make so many things with it, especially ground beef and ground pork, but also shredded potatoes, cheese, herbs and spices, and I've even used a grinder to make figgy pudding during the holidays. Whether you want to take the time to restore a vintage grinder or just buy a grinder attachment for your food processor, if you've never used one of these, I really suggest you give this a try. Not only is it a lot of fun to use, it'll help stretch your food budget and that's a good thing to do no matter how expensive it is to go grocery shopping. Feel free to post your comments below and thank you for watching.